So one of the questions before the House, why is Joe Biden waging war to end the gig economy? Joining us now to talk about it, Senator Marsha Blackburn. Uh, Senator Blackburn, welcome back. As always, ma'am, I'm just going to read you this great, it's from the Wall Street Journal editorial today. Who would be affected by ending these, you know, individual contractors? Well, consultants would be affected, but newspaper columnists, truck drivers, real estate agents, barbers, consultants, and other freelancers, and, of course, Uber and Lyft drivers. So why would they want to go against that? And I think I know the answer, but I want you to tell me. Well, those 87,000 IRS agents have to have something to do. And it is going to be going after people like in Tennessee. All of your musicians, your singers, your songwriters, oh. your performers, your tour managers, oh. the grip and the gaffer that are working on sets. These are all people that they're going to be going after. Now, the gig economy is there for innovators and entrepreneurs. But you know what? They're not joining unions. Mm. And this administration is all about propping up the unions. You know, we recently had a vote with um, a community care for veterans. And of course, it was pushed against by Chuck Schumer because the VA did not want community care and taking care of veterans where they want to be taken care of. They want them in the VA because it makes it easier for the unions. It means they have a purpose. I think you're just exactly right. You know what? I hadn't even thought about music and the arts and stuff like that, but you're exactly right. That's another yeah. add-on that should be on this. But it is. This is all the Biden's unionization. Yeah. The National Labor Relations Board is in cahoots with union organizers. We've seen plenty of examples uh, of That's that. Right. And this is, this is so transparent because the Trump administration had a completely different policy. We respected their independence. And uh, we knew what we were doing. And you're right. You, you know, why not allow for inventiveness? Why not allow for entrepreneurship? And that doesn't go hand in hand with unionization. It just doesn't. So I think you're dead yeah, right. But man. Larry, look at it. Yeah. Look at it like this. They don't even want you to innovate. Look at what they've done to the pharmaceutical companies where they've said, oh, you didn't create that vaccine. You didn't create that formula. We want that intellectual property. And you having your intellectual property is a constitutional guarantee to the citizens of this country. Mm. But this administration is all about a socialistic power grab and doing away with innovators and entrepreneurs, institutionalizing literally everything, mm. even research and development. That's where they're going to go on these issues. Senator Blackburn, one other one here. Um, the extra $426 billion for the student loan cancellation and it probably is going to be a lot bigger than that. I mean, some of these estimates are up to a trillion. But the CBO yeah. has scored this $400 right. billion plus, which brings the 22, 2022 deficit to $1.4 trillion, which is a big number. We're sort of now going back up with the emergency spending coming to an end. We're going back up. And it also reminds me, ma'am, of $31 trillion in federal debt, which is 125% of GDP. And I used to not really care about federal debt because I'm a supply sider, but that's before I saw 125% of GDP. Well, and you're right about that. And this student loan forgiveness, bear in mind, this is Joe Biden's gift to the rich because 40% of all the student loan debt is held by individuals with advanced degrees. They've got a master's, they're a doctor, they're a lawyer. They have an advanced degree, they are high income earners. And you have the bottom 20% of wage earners hold only 10% of student loan debt. So they say that they're doing it for people that are struggling, but the gift that they're giving is to the high income wage earners. I'm awful glad that it's being brought to the courts in a number of important lawsuits because this thing was unconstitutional yes. to begin with, don't you think? Really? Unconstitutional. He did not have that authority. Oh, yes. And, the end, and he said, by the way, he said COVID's over anyway. So that was the last remnant of this national defense thing. Give you the last word on that one. 
Well, uh, take, a, take a look at what they're doing with this. It is so not equitable, and they want to say they're all about equity, but people that have worked hard, that have paid their way through school, people that have been in the gig economy and had worked one or two jobs in order to get through without debt, they're being punished by Biden every time they turn around. 31 trillion, ma'am. 31 trillion. That's a big That's number. That's a very big number. Nobody's... Very big number. All right. Senator Marsha Blackburn, thank you ever so much. <laughs> The cavalry's coming, okay? That's my only hope. Please tell me the cavalry's coming. Otherwise, I don't know how I'm going to get through this.